I'm going to tell you a story about some time travelers. And the reason that I'm the person to tell you this story, because in my very tiny high school, I was voted most likely to build a time machine. <laughs> this is taken directly out of my yearbook. So the story begins uh, with a party that Stephen Hawking was hosting. Yeah, that happened. Uh, in 2009, he hosted a time traveler's party, and then he released the invitations. <laughs> a little known subplot to the movie Interstellar um, was that they were actually trying to attend this party. <laughs> so, uh, as, as you may know, uh, they didn't make it, and he hosted a party all by himself. So I'm here to tell you about why they didn't show. Because I know what happened. So they went through a wormhole, right? And wormholes are theorized to be inside the event horizon of a black hole. Let's kind of talk about what that is. So the event horizon of the black hole, do I have a clicker somewhere? I do, yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's this big circle. <laughs> you got it. The reason why that circle is there is because of gravity. If you tried to throw a tennis ball off this earth, you would probably be not successful. Not criticizing, it's just fact. <laughs> but we can get stuff off the earth. That's what we build rockets for. And the reason why we have to build a rocket to do it is because earth gravity is very strong and it's like, no, this is my rocket. And so we have to try really hard to actually get away from earth's pull. Yeah. And the same is true if we shoot a laser. We shoot a laser, it just goes off. I love it. Um, but what if the Earth was so incredibly massive that the velocity that light goes, the exact speed of light, was not enough to escape the Earth? That's a black hole. And that's what that event horizon is. That's, uh, that's, that's where the light is like, nah, bro, can't make it. It's too hard. So what happens when our crew of the Interstellar went inside this black hole? I'll give you a hint. They got squished. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I went to Jupiter, I would be a human pancake. If I was in a black hole, I don't know what I'd be, but there's a word for it. Spaghettification. <laughs> it's true. Wikipedia later. Uh, so if you're going to travel through a wormhole, uh, one thing that you're going to need is you're going to need to do some revolutionizing uh, material science to make sure to get that an anti-spaghettification spacesuit. So let's assume that our crew got that. Great work. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. So let's assume that they had their material science, they had their spacesuit. Well, they better hope that black hole is not rotating. Because uh, a, a bad news about rotating black holes is they actually don't have wormholes inside them because their uh, gravitational well is like And so there's not going to really get a wormhole from one place to another whenever it's so wobbly. It's actually, if it does make a wormhole, it's going to be very unstable and who knows where you're going to end up, but it's probably going to be some, somewhere in the nature of pancake land. A side note, um, we haven't discovered every black hole that there is, but all the ones we have discovered are kind of rotating. Next thing on your checklist, make sure that your black hole has a wormhole. <laughs> Let's assume that we had that. Okay, we found the black hole with the wormhole and we have our anti-spaghetti spacesuit. Maps. Maps, okay, yeah, it's kind of a map. Uh, so this is kind of the idea of what a wormhole looks like, um, according to some artists. You got, uh, here's Earth. We're gonna pretend we're traveling to planet Vulcan here. So here's our wormhole and this is, you know, this is the path us peasants would take when we're not, time uh, worm, worm holing. Uh, so what happens when we actually do have our crew actually go through? <laughs> well, this doesn't actually seem like time travel to me. That just kind of seems like teleportation. Like there's no actual time travel that happened there. And so how do we actually get time travel to happen? That was just moving. I lied. I didn't tell you the full story. What's actually happening in there? This is another cool thing. Yeah, time dilation. All right, art, yeah, thanks. 
Uh, so let's talk about time dilation. Um, so when you when you're close to a gravi when you're close to a, a big thing, there's lots of gravity. The farther you get away from it, the less gravity you got. I think I think it's probably all of us knew that. But this is where it gets weird: is the the less gravity you have, like pulling on you in a specific moment, your clock moves like differently. So if you are under the influence of a huge amount of gravity, you're just chilling there and gravity's just pulling on you, your, your watch actually ticks a little bit slower than somebody else who's sitting on the outside. So whenever someone up here experiences three hours, someone down here in that same amount of time would experience one hour. It's weird, um, but it's important for time travel. So what we really need is uh, a wormhole that's actually a little bit asymmetric. We need it to have more gravity on one end than it has on the other, that way we can take advantage of this time travel effect. So let's imagine this fantastically artistic rendered, rendered asymmetrical wormhole. Uh, and down here you have uh, a little bit less gravity hanging out where near Earth is. And then over here you got more gravity, over here where Vulcan's hanging out. And so whenever the wormhole opened up, time passed, but on both ends of this wormhole, time passed differently. And then our crew travels through. And you can see how we've gone from the future into the past. So step three <laughs> is not only to find a black hole with a wormhole, but it also needs to be asymmetric. And it also needs to be have been sitting around at just the right time so that you can go back in time to where you were, to where you need to go. So it has to be opened up, enough time has to have passed, has to be asymmetric, and it has to not be a rotating black hole that's housing it. Got a lot of requirements here. Well, there's another quick problem with the, what we just laid out, which is if you need to get back, it's, it's going to take a hot minute <laughs> or like, you know, a bajillion years. <laughs> uh, and so when it, one of our crew probably went through this wormhole, they may have gone back to the right date, but they didn't actually have enough time to make it all the way back to the party. And so what you really need is a wormhole where both the ends of the wormhole are actually pretty close to where you need to go. And so it's, you know, it's a little squish. So that changes our little, you know, checklist a little bit. So not only do we need our, you know, anti spaghettification spacesuits, we need our black uh, hole that actually has a wormhole in it, so non-rotating, hypothetical. It needs to be asymmetric with the right gravity on both ends, having been sitting there for the right amount of time to uh, for allow us to go to where we need to go. Um, and it actually has to be the uh, the mounds have to be pretty close together, so you can actually get somewhere interesting. Uh, so this is um, with this checklist then. Maybe we could have attended this party and the crew would have actually showed up. But they didn't. And why not? The physics is all there. I didn't make any of this up. This is just what math tells you. Well, it turns out that these are kind of hard. <laughs> like, I mean, if you think about, you know, your anti-spaghettification spacesuit, any material you make it out of will collapse due to gravity. So you got to do some anti-gravity interesting material science there. Uh, your, your black hole has to have a wormhole in it. As I mentioned, we haven't observed any of those. Doesn't mean they're not there. Just means we haven't seen them yet. Um, the asymmetry has to be in the right place. Uh, and it's got to be you know, close to where you need to go. And so it makes a time traveler's job really hard. But I will say that I want to leave you with a bit of hope. So cheers <laughs> to making impossible things hard and hard things possible.